Hi, welcome to Mental Health Mondays with Dr. David Morgan, brought to you by Onward Productions. Uh, as always, just a real uh, large thanks to Onward for asking me to do this. Uh, this is a, um, a weekly recording uh, for you to, uh, where I answer questions regarding uh, mental health issues and, uh, and oftentimes the gospel of Jesus Christ as well. I'm a licensed psychologist and um, am just happy to answer your questions. If you have questions for me, here's how you can reach me about that. Onward.mental.health.mondays at gmail.com. Uh, write in, like I said, any questions about mental health or the gospel of Jesus Christ, happy to answer them. Well, let's get to today's question. This is from a viewer who says, uh, who asks, how can youth leaders understand and recognize the mental health challenges of the youth they serve? Uh, wonderful question. Um, <clears throat> I think that uh, youth leaders are sometimes particularly um, struggle with this, mostly because we're seeing kind of an increase in mental health issues now in the rising generation that I don't think we've seen before. Um, I think one of the things that happens with parents and leaders today is that we're using a very old playbook and um, today's youth have different problems. They have different issues. And I think we need new rules and, uh, and new plays to work with them. So sometimes I think the youth of today get a little bad rap because we think, oh, they're just being obstinate. They're just being difficult. Whereas in most cases, uh, or in many cases, I think that sometimes the reason that it's not working out the way we hope it is, is because we as leaders or parents do not know how to best interact with them. So hopefully we can touch on that a little bit today. Um, I get asked all the time whether I think mental health issues are more prominent now than they were in the past. And um, I think, yes, um, uh, well, we know that there's a higher incidence rates of mental health issues being reported anyway. Uh, the question is why. Um, I think there's good outreach. I think it's more acceptable to admit to mental health issues anymore. Um, but I also think that we are being um, blessed with mental health challenges by our Heavenly Father. It's a way for us to, um, to basically to improve ourselves. Um, we often don't see it like that. And we think that mental health issues are just this challenge or this burden or this thing that's supposed to be avoided. But I really do think that it is critical to a lot of the development of, of people in these, um, these latter days in the 21st century. Um, so, so the question is, how can adults, especially those in position of authority, and this can apply to parents as well, um, how can they help the youth through these difficult times? I have three suggestions um, that I think will help. And um, these are things that can be addressed specifically with the youth. But I think as parents and leaders understand these uh, principles, then it will help them better understand the youth as well. And the first one is to normalize the experience, um, that kind of their mental health experience. Sometimes mental health issues are made worse because we kind of uh, freak out about the fact that we have them. Um, your son comes home with a diagnosis from his counselor and, and the parent has a hard time with that because, oh my gosh, now he's got a diagnosis. Or uh, someone in your young woman's program discloses that she has some sort of mental health issue. And then we think, oh, that's terrible. She has a mental health issue. Um, mental health issues are normal. Um, they're becoming more normal by the day. And they are part of the trials that our Heavenly Father gives us in order to move forward. And we're taught about that in Ether chapter 12, verse 27. Uh, Moroni says, and if men come unto me, this is the Lord. Um, it says, and if men come unto me, I will show unto them their weakness. I give unto men weakness that they may be humble. And my grace is sufficient for all men that humble themselves before me. For if they humble themselves before me and have faith in me, then will I make weak things become strong unto them. One of the key parts of that scripture is that the Lord gives us weakness. Um, I think mental health issues are part of that weakness that the Lord gives us. So instead of viewing them as this kind of... Um, this this uh, strange thing that's happened to us or this negative thing, or if we view them as a gift from Heavenly Father, then um, I, I think that helps. And if we also view the view it as it's not, we're not broken if we have these experiences. It's just another individual difference that we possess that makes us unique. And that if we follow that um the recipe basically in that scripture in Ether 12, 27, then not only can we gain greater faith in the savior, but we can, that weakness can become a strength to us. So that's the first thing is just kind of normalize the experience of mental health issues. It's okay to have mental health issues. Uh, second principle is to really emphasize the role of agency in this process. 
uh, one of the greatest misconceptions out there about mental health issues is that there's nothing we can do about them, that we're just victims to this, this overwhelming experience that happens to us. There are a lot of opinions out there regarding nature versus nurture and the role of genetics and mental health issues. Um, and, uh, but in my experience, regardless of the genesis of the mental health issue, there is always something that a person can do to move forward in that. And, and when I say that, I truly mean that. I have dealt with people in my career who have been floridly psychotic. I'm talking about actively hallucinating, um, extremely uh, delusional, and even those people in that very disturbed state, there are there have been ways that we can help them make decisions to help them move forward. Now, that doesn't cure their schizophrenia, um, but it helps them feel empowered in that situation. Um, so I think that the oftentimes we get stuck in this thing where we say, well, I have anxiety or I have depression and I'm, I'm powerless. There's nothing I can do. That is a really, that is a misconception. It is absolutely incorrect. And it's a dangerous place to be because the moment that we stop believing we can act, that's the moment we stop acting as well. And the moment we stop acting, that's when we stop progressing and we stop moving forward. And this life is about moving forward. It's about gaining ground on our challenges and difficulties and, uh, and becoming more like our Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, so I think the key in this is to help the youth understand what they can do. Oftentimes with mental health issues, we focus on what we can't do. Well, I can't do this. I can't go into the store because I have too much anxiety or I can't um, do all these tasks because I'm too depressed. That may very well be true, but what can you do? What can you do today in order to move forward? And like I said, that, may, that, that little thing that that person might do probably won't cure it. In fact, I'm sure it won't, um, but that's not the point. The point is it's one more step forward. And if we stop moving, we stop progressing. So helping the youth understand that there are things they can do, help them identify those things and help them have the courage and strength to do those things that are within their ability to move forward. Um, third principle is to help them understand how the burden is the blessing. Elder Bednar tells a great story about a man who bought a four wheel drive truck, gets it stuck in the snow, and um, the only way he was able to move was once he loaded the truck with a bunch of wood in the back, then he had enough um, ballast or uh, resistance in order to move out of the snow. And uh, Elder Bednar says that it's the it was the burden that enabled him to be able to move forward. That is the principle. And that is what happens with us. We need burdens in order to develop the kind of traction and spiritual and emotional traction in order to grow and to become more like the Savior. We live in a time of great ease, and the Lord has blessed us with amazing technologies. Um, you guys are able to view this video uh, thousands of miles away in the comfort of your own home from smartphones and tablets. And Heavenly Father has loved to bless us with those things. He doesn't want us to go backward. He doesn't want to send us back to the Dark Ages. He doesn't want to send us back to the 1800s with telegraph and, uh, and trains and things like that. He wants us to continue to have the blessings we have today, but he also knows that we need a load in the, our pickup truck, as it were, in order to move forward. And I think that mental health issues are part of that burden and part of that load. So this principle is kind of similar to the first one is kind of normalizing mental health issues, but it goes a little bit beyond that because instead of just saying, it's okay for me to have mental health issues, now we're saying not only is it okay for me to have mental health issues, but this mental health issue is my key to becoming like the savior. This is my opportunity in order to grow and to become like him. So it's not, so we've moved from viewing it as a negative to viewing it as neutral to now viewing it as a positive. This is the, um, this is the resistance that's going to help me move forward. I think that is very important for youth to understand and for those that serve um, and that lead them to understand that help them view the positive in this. This is not a curse or uh, just the result of an absent minded father in heaven who forgot to bless you with something to help you manage your mental health issue. This is a divine intervention where he's saying, I'm going to give you this issue, this anxiety, this depression, this low self-concept, this eating disorder, this whatever it is, I'm going to give this to you so that you can become stronger, so you can have enough heft in your life so that you, when you move forward, it's difficult, but through that difficulty, you gain strength. Um, so the three things I think leaders can do to help uh, youth better understand and manage mental health issues to review is number one, to normalize the experience. Number two, emphasize their agency to act. 
and help them act on the things they can do, not focus on what they can't do and help them understand that the burden is the blessing. This is their vehicle to moving forward. Thanks everyone for watching. Um, again, remember if you have any questions, reach out to me at the email at the beginning of the video, or you can reach me on Instagram at LDS Psychologist or on my website at www.ldspsychologist.com. And always remember that change is possible, but that change requires action and keep moving forward. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.